When I was young, I lived on a farm in a rural Oregon with my parents. I was only a child. We weren't that big of a commercial farm, just a family type thing. We had five cows, three horses, a small herd of goats, two dogs, and one chicken coop. We also had some Indian runner ducks that we mostly kept as pets. We didn't really make any money off of the place, just enough to sustain the animals and a little extra for ourselves. Money enough to make a decent vacation every couple of years. Dad had his other job in town and his ins as an ins insurance agent. He was the only one that around, really. The town wasn't even more than 1.500 people. Mom gave horse riding lessons as well. We weren't rich, but we were comfortable. It was an easy life, or at least it could have been a lot worse. I went to school, dad went to work, mom took care of the animals, we, then we all had dinner every night. And I would go to bed while mom and dad had a beer or two and watch the news. Sometimes at night I would hear things outside, mostly just normal stuff. The cows and horses would get spooked by a coyote or something, or I would hear the dogs chasing a rabbit, barking their heads off. Every once in a great while, we would find a chicken dead. Dad would also tell me about it, but never let me see the body. Although I asked frequently, he would kept Mom and I inside until he had gone out. Did whatever he had to do with the body. Throw sawdust to cover any blood, and then life would go on as normal. I assumed it was foxes, as I had a couple of them out in the pasture over the years. Slinking around back and forth throughout the grass. The summer when I was 10 years old, I remember helping my mom change the bedding of the horse's stalls when we heard a huge racket going outside. If you ever heard the sounds of horses in pain, you don't want to. Trust me, it sounds like almost as if a person was screaming. Well, that's what we heard. And one of her horses, the Palomino, came running into the barn with a wound on his left thigh. Four long marks, claw marks, it ran across his body for about a foot. It had blood running down its leg and it was limping. I was so scared by the sight of that much blood that my mom locked the horse in the stall and made me go inside with one of the dogs. She told me to lock the door and stay inside until she came in to get me. I did. Eventually, my mom came inside and told me that the horse had hurt itself on the barbed wild wire that ran the perimeter of the pasture. We owned more land than beyond that, but it was mostly forested. Well, I guess I believe her at the time. But dinner time that night, I noticed my dad being practically quiet and mom talking a lot more than she normally did. She was being really animated and I noticed that my dad had gotten his rifle out and got set for the back door. Usually, he only did want that the coyotes had been up to. That night, I went to bed as normal, but I had trouble falling asleep. I turned on my desk lamp and decided to read a comic books until I got tired. I have a very vivid memory of reading Uncanny X-Men and hearing the back door open. Looking out, I could see my dad on the porch light, lighting up a cigarette and holding his rifle under his arm. As he started walking over to the driveway, then turned to follow the fence line, I couldn't sleep until I knew my dad was back safe. I kept coming down the stairs with an excuse of getting water to see if my dad was back in the house yet. And each time, all I saw was mom sitting on the couch in the living room, staring at the blank TV screen and looking worried. Sighing occasionally, eventually about four in the morning, I think. Dad did come back, but I was so tired and relieved that I fell asleep as soon as I knew he was home. He never told me what he did that night, but I never thought to ask. Two months later, I was back in school. It rained a lot in Oregon in the fall, and this day was no different. All I could hear him in my bedroom was rain hitting the ground and the aluminum roof of the chicken coop. There was light thunder in the distance. It was only getting closer. 
I thought that I heard a coyote yapping out in the garage, or it could have been one of the dogs. I looked out, straining my eyes to see whatever there may have been. In a brief, distant lightning flash, I saw something. It looked almost like a person, but hunched over with a long torso. It was tall, taller than my dad, who was looking good at least six foot four at least. I just barely caught a glimpse of it on the rear, near side of the garage. When the light faded and I couldn't see it again that night, there was another dead chicken the next morning, deferred in just in many weeks. I told my dad what I'd seen the previous night. The color went out of his cheeks momentarily, until he told me that a storm must have been playing tricks on me. I accepted it as that. Four months after we lost that cow, it wasn't the middle of the night. We all woke up to the same time, and there was a lot of noise in the pasture, but only briefly, the cry of a dying animal, and a primitive guttural yell that I have heard before. My dad rushed up to me in my room, and I could hear him running up the stairs to my room. He had his rifle in his hand, and opened my door. He saw that I was awake and told me to stay inside no matter what, and to try and go back to sleep. I don't think I have to say that sleep wasn't really an option any longer. But I did stay in my room, with a blanket held tight around my shoulders and standing out of the window. Probably about ten minutes later, I heard gunshots in the field. I didn't know what he was shooting at. Whatever it was, it had attacked the cow, or the cow itself, trying to put the animal out of its misery. My dad rarely, if ever, talked about that night. I later found dead that he had gotten to a cow, only to find a rip open on the ground, bleeding out from its torso. The shots I heard were him shooting the cow in the head. So I kept like that for years, a chicken or a duck here and there, something bigger, only very rarely. It sounds absurd, but I almost came of it as the commonplace. I only ever caught a glimpses of that thing, until what comes next, it terrified me. It happened in the middle of the day, over the course of a long weekend, when my parents had gone to Seattle to see my uncle, who was ill. It was a Saturday afternoon. I was 17 years old. I was out in the barn putting food for the horses and the dogs. The horses were running around in the pasture, and the dogs were asleep in the corner. One of them in the horse's stalls, I heard something rustling in the tall grass outside of the pasture. The dogs looked around for a bit but didn't seem to mind. I assumed it was just one of those horses waiting for me to leave so they could eat. I kept going on about what I was doing, and in several minutes, I thought I heard breathing. I turned around to see it was standing in the door, tall as hell hunched over. The sun was streaming behind it, light up the dust and the air around like some sort of sickly halo. It was looking at me, considering me, maybe trying to decide whatever or not I was food. I remember swearing and turning and running as fast as I could for the house, not even thinking. Panic, causing my legs to move, it was behind me, but not breathing hard. I heard its feet hitting the ground in a constant rhythm. I got to the house, opened the door, and slammed it behind me and locked it. I did as fast as I could. I tore through the house, locking every door and the drawing the blinds on every window. I could hear it snarling back outside. The dogs were barking at it a lot, but they wouldn't try to attack one thing. It was too big and they knew it. It roared at the dogs and they ran off, probably to hide in the pasture. I went to my parents' bedroom and got my dad's rifle. I loaded it and set up the chair next to the living room, facing the back door and waited. It started prowling around the house. I could hear its feet crunching on the gravel of the driveway and the wooden planks of the back deck. I kept walking back and forth. I thought about trying to look through the window to see it, but I was too scared. Eventually, after hours of hoping it would go away, the sun went down. I turned on all the outside lights and went up to my room. I opened my window, a glow from the porch light. It had long, swoony arms, and it walked on a bent knee. It was only by the chicken coop. It then disappeared from view, and I heard the chickens squawking and screeching. 
the fang reappeared with a dead, bloody chicken in its hands. It bit one of its wings off that we know there was dripping slime and drool and let the dead bird drop to the ground at its feet. Then it looked at me. Its eyes made contact with my eyes. It turned away again, back to the chickens. It came back with another bird, mutilated in front of me, dropped it and went back again. And again, I could have taken a shot at it if I was astonished and confusing trying to figure out what it was doing. Then it hit me. It was a show of power. It was showing me that it was stronger than me and that I could do whatever it wanted to do because I couldn't stop it. At the same time, I felt powerless and sickened. Powerless because it was saying it was true. If it was that thing and me, I wouldn't stand a chance. Sickened because I realized that kind of intelligence, it would need to be more culinary, that message. The thought of it shook me out of my stupor, and I remembered the rifle by my side. It was heading back to the chickens, and I decided that when it came back, I would take my shot. It strode back to the porch, almost aggrant, walking on bented knee with those arms long as the chickens were nearly dragged on the ground. I raised up my rifle to my eye. I tried to steady myself. My heart was beating so hard I could see the rifle shaking ever so slightly in the rhythm of each heartbeat. I could hear the pounding on my own ears. It raised the body and its mouth just like it was about to put the chicken's head inside. I squeezed the trigger. The crack of the gun echoed and now the shattered quiet of the nightmare standoff and I heard it howl. A painful howl. It started to howl as I hit on the outside of the shoulder. It ran off into the night. I never saw it again. It was still out there, though. And it still killed the chickens and other things, more often than before. I'm writing this as of now, because my parents died three weeks ago. They were killed in a collusion with a drunk driver. He survived, and they, and they left me the farm, and I intend to live there with my own family. I'm now 32 now, and I work for an Oregon fish and game office in Salem. I'm married to a wonderful woman named Stephanie. We have one son, Zachary, who is four years old, and we are expecting a daughter in four months. I've come to the farmhouse alone today. I told Steph that I wanted to have some time alone in my parents' house to deal with some emotions. She was very understanding. I've come back to claim what is rightfully mine. I have my dad's rifle next to me on the table, and it's almost dusk. I've also brought several portable halogen lights to set up around the house and around my own shotgun. I'm borrowing my handgun from Joe, a guy at the fish and game who I work with. When I'm done typing this account of my memories, I will print it out and leave it on the dining room table, along with my wedding ring and key and a safe deposit of where my will is kept. Everything is loaded and ready. Hopefully I will return to collect those things and nobody will ever know I write this. Steph in the next event, you are the unfortunate soul to find this, which I am terrified to think is likely the outcome. The thought of you having to go on alone hurts me more than anything in this world ever can. Know that I love you more than anything, and I hope you understand I'm doing this to keep you safe. Zachary, I love you, and you're and I hope you grow up to be a good, kind-hearted, and strong man like your grandfather was. To my unborn daughter, if I don't live long enough to meet you, it would be the single greatest regret of my life. Tell the police, tell Fish and Game, call Joe. He's one of the few people who knows about this. Make this situation known. Eventually someone will kill it, even if it isn't me. Goodbye for now. And that, my little pretties, was The Thing in the Fields, a creepypasta. My final thoughts on this story? I actually heard of this story from that creepy reading. And I gotta say, this story is pretty much similar to The Thing that Stalks in the Woods creepypasta. Which, that, that I narrated about not too long ago. But I think for some reason, that story that I narrated, you know, a while ago... And this story, they're kind of similar. 
Like, I mean, I think that's the only reason why I was kind of hesitant to narrate this story is because it kind of almost like is the exact same as the other ones. Now, I'm going to stick here and say right now, I'm not saying this is a ripoff or anything. If it's an inspiration, I could somewhat understand. But to me personally, I feel that this story is kind of... How should I put this? It's kind of sounding the same like the other one. But except we don't know what this thing is. I have a feeling it's some sort of monster. Like some sort of creature that, you know, could be some spirit or something. I really don't know what it is because it doesn't go into detail about it. So that's one thing I did notice. But when I actually saw this story, I honestly said, I don't even know what to think. If I gotta be brutally honest, the story is kind of sounding the same. Now, I'm not trying to sit here and do this just, you know, just to piss anyone off. No, I'm not saying this is a terrible story, but I definitely could say this one is similar to the other story I narrated not too long ago. I mean, I think that's the only thing, but it's not copying the same plot. Like, the plot of this one is different compared to the other one. And that's just me stating my, what I think personally, like maybe I'm missing something. I don't know exactly. Maybe someone can explain in the comments in the comments below, but yet again, I mean, I really don't know what to think to be completely honest. Like I really don't know what to believe or think because this story is pretty much almost the exact same thing as the other story. The thing that stalks in the fields. But except this is the one where the protagonist, you know, ends with a wife and kids. While one is going to be born soon. And he's like out to go kill whatever this thing was that dis try to destroy the farm life and that. So I really don't know. This story was honestly confusing because it kind of sounds like it's the similar and same thing as the other story like this I've narrated that was similar maybe this is just me being nitpicking but yet again I don't really know at this point I really don't know to be honest so I don't know who the original author of this story is so I'm gonna leave it as anonymous for now if I ever find out who the original author of this story is I'll be sure to give him or her proper credit but right now I'm just gonna leave it as anonymous for now until I find out who the original author of the story is so with that being the case, that being said, um, yeah, this is just simply my own personal opinion. And if you happen to disagree with me, that's fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions regards to these creepypastas. And this is simply my own personal thoughts. My final rating of this story would have to be a... I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10. Mate, I'm giving it a 7 out of 10 because the story kind of feels the exact same almost as the thing that st stalks in the fields I don't even know if it's the kind of love a spinoff to it or an inspiration but that's just me like I mean I don't really know what to say else about this story like my mind is just literally all over the place with this story but yet again I mean you guys can state your own opinions in the comments below you know see what you guys think if you think it's like the same as the original not the original, but if you think it's the same as the thing that stalks in the woods story, do you think it's like a completely different story? I want to believe it's kind of the same story, but at the same time, I'm not saying it's a ripoff or anything because it's not. I'm not saying it's a ripoff of that story. I'm just saying. But yet again, what did you guys think about this creepypasta? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Also, what we have done first to help make this story a lot better. Feel free to leave me now with your thoughts are down in the comments below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. If you're brand new here to this channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I make brand new videos every single day. Don't forget to ring the notification bell to when I upload. So that way, you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, um, please roll the outro because I'm out.